Hi, welcome to this presentation on college search and college lists. This is a presentation to help you understand and give you some tools and recommendations on how to help students build college, to do their college searches and how to build college lists. I am an instructor for the UCA, UCLA College Counseling Certificate Program, and this is in support of that program and the courses. First of all, I want to talk about the college planning goals. One of our goals as counselors is to help engage our youth, our teenagers, fully in their college planning process. After all, it is their experience. They're the ones that are going to go to college. So it needs to be something that they're very actively engaged in. And the other thing that I have found as a counselor is the journey can be just as important as the outcome. The, the self-awareness, the growth, the maturity that students go through as they go through this process can be quite, um, quite a lot. It can be quite developmentally, um, and they can go through quite a growth in terms of who they are, what they're looking for, and what's going to be a good right fit college for them. So the goal is, is as you're building a college list and going through the college search process is to ensure that there's balance and that there are lots of opportunities for students. We are going to focus on different parts of the college process. We're not going to cover all of the different aspects, but I just wanted to build your awareness. First is first step is the student self-reflection. The more they learn about themselves, the more they dig deep and explore who they are, what they're interested in, what they're not interested in, what their skills and talents and abilities are, the better their college search and college application process is going to be. So this is all about navigating the process. We're going to be focusing today on the college search, the research and college list, college applications. There are two parts to the college applications I like to refer to as the tangible and the intangible. The tangible are the GPA, the test scores, things you can point to and say, okay, that's what this is for me. This is the classes I took, this is the grades I got, this is the test scores I have. The intangible are the activities, the essays, the recommendations, things like that. So those are both components of the college applications. We're not really focusing on those today. The other steps are financial aid and scholarships and also then decisions. So we're going to be focusing on the middle category, the college applications. So as I mentioned, the first step is the student reflection. That's where the journey begins. And I'm going, we have a lot of information in the course, the finalizing the college admissions course that helps students to go through that self-reflection process. They need opportunities to learn and reflect on what are their needs and priorities. Oftentimes they've never really internalized or looked inside to see where they're at or what's important to them. So we give them that opportunity. And there are surveys in the college match, online college counseling platforms, and many career inventories that can be used as early as middle school. So these are available in schools and colleges and you know um, online. So look for those tools and resources. So the next part is to focus on fit. What is that and help our students to define the best fit? How do I know as a student what the best fit is for me? I may think it's the biggest school in the world with the biggest football team, but we need to go a little bit deeper than that. Best fit is often, and you can define it in lots of different ways, but one way that is easy to comprehend and help students and parents is to think about it as a four-legged stool or a table. And you have four aspects, the academic, the social, the physical, and the financial. And when those are all given equal consideration and thought and preparation, then you end up with the center of the table or the stool as your best fit. So that's what you're looking for. So how do we define that? 
by addressing all those four areas. So for example, academic is those tangible aspects. What's your grade point average? What classes have you taken? How'd you do on tests, if standardized tests if you took them? The social is gonna be a little bit more of the intangible. Are you interested in sports? What kind of student groups do you wanna participate in? What do you wanna study? What kind of housing do you wanna participate in? Physical, where do you want to live, state, country? Is it a public or a private school? How big is it? How small is it? What location is it? Things of that nature. And then very important is the financial. What are the graduation rates? The percent of need met? What about merit awards? Will the college give you scholarships based on your academic performance? And um, what are the in-states or out-of-state costs? So all those things come together to help identify what that best fit is going to be. One of the experts in college admissions is Peter Van Buskirk. He used to be the director of admissions at Franklin Marshall. He's written the book, The Admissions Game, and he provides um, presentations and workshops for schools all over the country. And so he gives the following advice about finding the best college fit. He says it should provide a study, a program of study that meets the students' needs, their interests, their aptitudes, you know, what they, they want to, um, what major or area of field they want to study. What's the style of instruction? Is it consistent with their students' learning style? I've done a learning style survey with my students for years, and I have found this is very valuable. Students um, are used to one instruction style. They may want something a little more personal, or they may want something a little impersonal. So that's an important aspect, and it's often one that's neglected. What is the level of academic rigor? It should be comparable or commiserate with the student's ability and preparation. You don't want them to go to a school where they are not prepared at all. And they, you want a community that feels like home where they can walk on campus and go, I feel like I belong here. So these are the questions and the things that we can help guide students and have them think about as these four different levels. This information and these these tips and recommendations you can all listen to on my YouTube channel. There's interviews with Peter Van Buskirk, college admissions changings, and parting the admissions curtain during COVID. After you've done all that, the best college fit will be the place that values you for what you have to offer. It's not the name, it's not the brand, it's not the location, it's not where my best friend goes, but the place is going to value what you have to offer. That's what the students are looking for. And if we can help communicate that and, and um, you know, help them see that as a value, both students and parents, then it will go a long way. So now, once we've identified and created that best fit, how do you identify priorities? How do you find that right place? Well, there are lots of different ways that you can do this. There are, but the question is becomes like, what is important? What is important to the student? And also what is important to the family? I've had families who've said, I don't want my child to go out of California. I don't want my child to go farther than three hours away. I don't want my child to be out. You know, I want my child to be where there's a, a major airport that I can get in and out. So there are lots of ways that families have priorities, both for the student and the parent. So this is, these are 10 different ones that you can use. These are pretty common and pretty global. They're, they're pretty general. So, so you could make this be as specific and as um, you know as many as you want. But this gives you a place to start. These are some of the different priorities that you can look at. And then there are lots of tools for looking at these priorities. You, there are documents, the self-survey for the college bound. This is in the college match by Dr. Stephen Antonoff. He also has a 
document qualities that make a college right for you. And then students can identify what am I looking for? They can dig deep and see, well, what, what is going to be a good search? There's an online tool called, called Coursava. There are free accounts. Students can set up free accounts. Counselors, advisors can set up free accounts and they can, you can create as many cards you can do it online. You can also purchase these as you know, physical cards that you use in a card sort. So that's a resource and I'm sure there are other resources. These are just the ones that I'm familiar with. And then you can do it yourself. And then you can create cards with priorities, those 10 priorities on the previous slide. And I've put this information into the modules for, for you. So you can add or change cards as needed. So helping students to go through and discuss what priorities are, why are they, what's the must have, what's nice. I have my students just rank them from one to 10. And then the top ones, the top three or four are the ones that they really do their search on. The ones in the middle are the nice to have. And the ones at the very bottom is like, well, if they have it, great. But if they don't, it's not going to be imperative. So it really does help to help prioritize because no college is going to have everything that a student wants. So how do you balance once they've looked, they've found their fit and they are looked through colleges? How do you balance a list? You want, Peter talks about managing expectations. You want them to be realistic and calculating their chances of admission, especially now over the last few years, especially during and after COVID, that's a really important aspect of this. It has become much more competitive to get into many schools. You wanna focus on places, again, where the student is gonna be valued for what they have to offer. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a 4% acceptance rate or a 54% acceptance rate. If it's something that the student has to offer and it's gonna be value to them, then that's the focus. And you want to help the students arrive at a short list of colleges early in the fall. You know, sometimes you might have it at the end of the junior year. The timing of this is up to you. So one of the things you, I would recommend is defining college categories uh, by acceptance rates. This is not the all the end all. You can add in other aspects. But if you help your students to say it gives you something tangible, it gives you and numbers and targets that you can use. And it works really well. I've done this with my students for years and it makes it very easy to communicate not only to the students, but to the parents. So any college that has 20% or less acceptance rate, we automatically put in the dream. Or another term is the wild card because there's no guarantee. You can dream about the college, but there's no guarantee you're gonna be admitted. And you don't want all your colleges to be in that category. So if it's 20% or less, we automatically put it in that category. The reach is 21 to 40%. And again, I recognize that if I have a high GPA or you know, it's a specific major, that's going to influence whether it's reach or not, but this just gives you some guidelines. Target is 40 to 60%, and they always need to have those likely colleges, and that could be 60 to 100%. So I know sometimes it's hard to get students to do this, but this gives you a guideline, and it gives you a rubric so you can use with your students. So as they're putting together their list, you have numbers. And how many of you have had students come into your office, they give you this list, and they say, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Counselor, here's what I want to apply to. And you've got 25 colleges that are all dream schools. They're all in the 20% or less acceptance rate. That's not a balanced list. So we need to help students through their college search and the research to manage their list and make it balanced. So Recommendation, and I know these are ideal, dream or wild card, three or four schools. If they've got 10 or 12, that's too many in that dream or wild card category. They, they need to narrow their list. Reach four to five, target five to six, likely three or four. You know, if I could get them to five or six, that would be great. But I know they're going to get into these schools. So three, two, you know, anywhere from one to four is good. So at a minimum, it's three colleges. They can do without the dream. They can do a reach target likely. Um, recommend six to 12. I try to keep my students to 10, 
primarily because the FAFSA only takes 10 colleges. Um, most of my students apply for through the FAFSA, but you can recommend uh, six to 12. Maximum is 15 to 20. You can only do 20 colleges on the Common App. So if not all your schools are on the Common App, that's still 20 colleges is a lot to manage. So helping students and many colleges, many advisors, many offices have limits. You can do 12 or 10 or eight or whatever your number is, but whatever that number is, creating the, the balance and having a target of these are these different numbers, then the students will end up with multiple acceptances, they'll end up with an acceptance, and it'll, you'll have much happier students and parents at the end of the process. So what about the college search? That's a big part. Uh, and there's a process that goes to that too. I have helped counselors do college search for many, many years. And one of the things that I find is that Oftentimes, counselors and students will go in and they'll do a search and I want all these factors and they pick everything that they want. And then they end up with no colleges coming up in the search. And then they wonder why. Well, I guess I, you know, nothing, no colleges are right for me. And that's not just not true. So the goal is to start broad, do a search broad, and then just narrow the search as you go down. Going back to the priorities, not all you're not going to find a college that has everything. So find, pick the things that are most important and then just fine tune it. And so I have done a tutorial on this and this will be available on the YouTube channel and it's also through the um, course. So I've also created some ready-made lists to make college searching easier for you and just give you a resource. These are all uploaded into the course module. There's some on, you know, that I'm labeling prestige, there's Ivy League, public Ivies, and the most selective colleges. These are the ones that have 20% or less acceptance rate. That way, if you know that, you know, you'll know which ones fall in there. And then that there are columns as you look at these lists that lists um, their acceptance rates or location, the size, a lot of different factors are included. College guides, the colleges that change lives, the fifth college guide, there's lists in there for you for that. And then the U.S. News and World Report, the top 100 liberal arts and the top 100 national universities. These were as of fall of 2021. So, I've also created regional. I know this doesn't cover all the regions. I don't have one from Texas or from Florida, but at least gives you an idea. There's Midwestern, New England, Southern Regional Ed, Western, those of you who are in the West like myself, we have what we call the WUI, which is really great. It's a consortium. Many of these are consortiums where students can pay less out-of-state tuition in a consortium school. And then there's the University of California um, that gives you all the UCs. And then I created a special list for you because this comes up all the time is what kind of colleges can my B students go to? There are lots, there are a lot of opportunities. So I created the colleges for B student list. So where do you find these colleges? How do you um, locate them? There are lots of search tools, big future, College Express, lots of different ones. One that I really like and I really recommend is College Navigator. It's actually through the federal government. It's got a lot of data. Sometimes the data, especially in financial aid, is a little, um, it's it's in behind a year or so, but, but uh, most of the data is pretty current and things like majors don't change that much. So there's a free through College Navigator, and it's nice because it's through the federal government. You can actually download lists, do comparisons. It's very versatile. Subscriptions, if you're at a school, you may have a college planning tool that has a search, Maya Learning, Naviance, Score. There are several others too. These are the ones I'm familiar with. If you're an IEC, you can have a subscription, Council More, College Planner Pro, 360 Planner, and then Maya Learning, uh, which guided path is now through Maya Learning. So you have two versions. 
Now, I did a tutorial to just show you how to do a college search. So this is also in the course. You can watch the tutorial. It's about 10 minutes long. It's something you can share with students if you'd like or parents. You know, you're free to share. It's on my YouTube channel. So enjoy the College Navigator tutorial. I didn't want to do a tutorial on all the different systems. I wanted to show you the principles through this one. Then college research, learning about the colleges. This is really key. Students do need to do the research. You can handle it in lots of different ways. A lot of schools and counselors handle this in lots of different ways. You can assign student research projects. I know a lot of people who do a project as a PowerPoint and the students have to research information on each of the colleges and then present that to their parents. I think that's a very effective way to do it. And also ask students to review majors, courses, clubs, things like that. So you can give them assignments as part of that college research process and be sure to give them directions and guidelines. But the more structure you get, the better information and outcomes you're gonna get. As I have done this with my students, uh, I you often use discussions and put links in to have my students look at information. And I remember one of my students, after she had researched all the programs in a journalism program and broadcasting program, she, she was so excited. It's like, these classes just make me giddy. And she could just hardly wait. So the more work they put into it, the better they're going, the excitement's going to grow and they're going to understand more about what they're, what why they're applying to college and what to look for. So the other thing you can do is website scavenger hunts. I know people have done that, have the students go visit college videos and tours. I often do that, social media, Facebook, college fairs, both virtual and in person. And I'm sure you think of lots of other things too, but just having your students do research can be very valuable. And then the college applications. We're not gonna, this is, we'll cover this later, but I just wanted to mention it, the what, when, or how. There are different, you can think about college applications as different components. I've done this for years and it's a very great visual. It really helps parents to understand what they're getting in for. And I had a hard time coming up with terms. So I, I went to the prospect, the perspective of, okay, which ones are easy, which ones are more complicated. And so we have the easy application, you have the application and the student just fills in their transcript or self-reports their transcript and they're done. And there are several public universities that have applications that way. And it's so nice. It just makes it so much easier. Then there are moderate ones, which are applications. This is still the transcript, the self-reported transcript. And maybe they're putting in test scores if it's... Um, you know, if they are, they're requiring the test scores, but so many colleges now are doing tests optional. The average application was what most people are um, familiar with is the application, the transcript, and the test scores. And also I would add in here the activities because that they're going to write down what they've done and what they've been involved in and things like that complex applications, transcript, test scores, activities, and then essay. So that adds another layer. And the next one, the last one I termed project because it's like a project management process. Applications, transcript, test scores, activities, essays, and recommendations. So, you know, you may have public schools that have all of this. You may have private schools that just have the easy, but, but it helps them to look at as like, I've got all these pieces to get this, this uh, complete application. It's not just turning the application in and I don't even have financial aid on here. So, you know, just think of it. There are lots of different components that go with this for your students. And so managing the college process. They need to decide an application type. Some colleges accept as much as 80 or 90 percent of their class in the early rounds, whether it's early decision or early action. So they need to plan for that. The, the, do the student research and calendar admission dates. They need to look up those dates and know when they're due. A lot of times we'll set those due dates a month ahead, you know, several weeks ahead to make sure 
organize the milestones or the tasks that need to be done during the application process, starting essays, and use online tools or other resources, you know, at CRM, you know, anything that you can use to help manage that project. Then the last step is to execute a plan, set up appointments with your students to check in with them or have a class or, you know, whatever process it is that works for you, set them assignments. They have to have certain things in. If you're using a tool like Naviance, oftentimes they have to have their list of who they want to ask to do recommendations, the same thing as Maya Learning. So setting assignments is helps you to be able to manage and helps students and parents. And it relieves so much anxiety because they know what they're doing and where they need to do it and what needs to be done. And it relieves anxiety for you too. So that helps you to be able to track progress. And then through all of it, you're going to communicate, you know, with parents, students, um, staff, everybody about what the plan is and what the expectations are. And in the end, the outcome is going to be college acceptances, congratulations, college, here we come. So this is uh, just a brief overview, but I hope it's given you some ideas and some resources. There are links in this presentation, so this will be available as well. And um, enjoy. This is the exciting part. It's often the fun part of this whole process is going through and researching colleges, creating lists, and getting that first step or second step of the stage going. So thank you.